Hey YouTubers, it's Don from True Cable coming back at you again. And this time we're going to talk about terminating shielded category 6A, or this could be CAT 6-2, we're going to use CAT 6A for this demonstration, to shielded external ground 8P 8C plugs. And the various tools that are going to make your life a lot easier, hint, hint, when it comes to terminating one of these uh, relatively challenging to terminate style 8P 8C plugs. So we're going to get into the various tools you're going to need, some techniques that I've developed over time that are going to give you a much better chance for success in dealing with this type of challenging termination. So stick around. We're going to go blow by blow, and we're going to terminate one of these guys from start to finish. Be right back. One of the most important tools, believe it or not, is our true ground. That is a plier that allows closure of the crimp or the external ground very precisely onto the cable jacket with even pressure every time. Another thing that you're going to find very useful is our copper fabric strips. Now these copper fabric strips function just like copper tape with a conductive adhesive, except these strips are very thin and they don't rip. Uh, by mistake, which happens a lot with copper uh, tape. So this eliminates the need to fold back the cable shield and then wrap the drain wire around that and try to jam it into the rear of the plug. So that's going to make bonding your cable shield a lot simpler. And of course, you're always going to need a good pair of flush cutters. So let's get right into it and start terminating. So we're going to demonstrate category 6A, plenum, shielded, and it's a very thick cable. So we're going to strip about an inch and a half or so to two inches of cable jacket off of there. And you just simply turn the tool around one full turn. And what you're looking to do is put a nice score on there, which I did. You didn't actually cut through, you put a score. So you're going to pop on one side, and you're going to pop on the other side, and then you're going to pull it off. So keep this around because this is going to come in handy to untwist your conductors. But as you can see, the stripper didn't cut through the cable shield, which is very important because if it does, you could have nicked a conductor and you have to cut off and start all over again. So we're going to go ahead and get this propped up. This is the rip cord in the cable. I'm going to go ahead and remove the rip cord. And then we're going to remove the cable shield. And you're going to make a small nip at the very jacket edge, just like so and remove the cable shield and discard it. Now what you'll find now is a drain wire, a spline, some conductor pairs, and this polyester wrap tape. You want to remove the polyester wrap tape as well. All right, so the next step is to take this drain wire that you've got and start wrapping it around the, rear, the cable jacket backwards, like so. So you got a nice little wrap on there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to tack it down with a copper fabric strip. So we'll go ahead and take one of those off. And they're very thin. So for this particular plug, I recommend that you skip about an eighth of an inch of the cable jacket and start a little further down. The reason being, you want to be able to see the color of the jacket when you seat it into the plug right here. So uh, if you're seeing just uh, a metallic material, you're kind of seeing metallic here too it's hard to tell where the cable's stopping at. So skip about an eighth of an inch or so. Pull it on there tight, get it all nice and wrapped. The drain wire is now bonded to this copper fabric strip, which is bonded to the cable shield, which will then bond to your plug. Next step is to go ahead and remove the cable spline. And what I typically do, because we're putting on an RJ45, is I'll make a nip on each little wing at a downward angle. And the reason I do that is because it allows you to twist off like this and you have no spline left. It's a very easy, uh, easy end to deal with. You don't have to worry about your spline interfering with putting on your plug. All right, the next step is you're going to want to untwist your conductors all of the way down. So we're going to go ahead and get our jacket piece that we had before and use this as a nice tool to untwist this. Some of these pairs are twisted a little tighter than the others, and that's to electromagnetically balance the cable. All right, so we've got all of our pairs untwisted, but we need to remove the kinks. We're going to use the T568B pattern 
You can use the A pattern, just make sure you're using the same at both ends. So you want to have minimal crossover right at the jacket just to make things easier on you. So don't untwist down in further into the jacket, just make sure they're not crossed at the jacket. So white, orange, orange, white, green, and then you're going to have blue, and then you're going to have white, blue, and then green, and then white, brown, and brown. So it's kind of pre-set up. And then I'm going to use the hard plastic on my clippers here to straighten these guys out. I have used metal dowels in the past, and that works, but the problem is, is that overworking the conductor can actually thin out the copper and cause trouble with fitting onto the plug, being too loose. So two to three passes is typically more than enough. You got want to get the kinks out. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, but you don't want to thin out the copper at the same time. By the way, if you're doing lots of these, you're definitely going to want to have a glove on you because you're going to end up with a really sore thumb after about three or four. All right, so now that we've got the conductors uh, relatively straightened out, we're going to go ahead and put them into the proper order. So white, orange, orange, white, green, blue, white, blue, green, white, brown, brown. All right. So I'm going to go ahead then and I'm going to flush cut at a nice likely spot that's kind of all nice and lined up. All right. You should restrict your use of these plugs to a single end of your cable run only. The other end should be like a keystone jack or maybe even a field termination plug something a little more mechanically stable than an RJ45 is. Take your RJ45 plug, your shielded plug, and then you're going to want to bend the external ground tab just slightly past 90 degrees, like so. It makes it easier to get the conductors in here without it being in the way. And there is a plastic ledge in here, so you're going to have, you may take you a couple of times to get those conductors to go in. But I've gotten pretty good at it, so as you can see, uh, it does stagger the conductor, so be careful when you're checking color sequence. Uh, white, orange, orange, white, green, blue, white, blue, green, white, brown, brown. And that is correct. And as I mentioned before, when you're putting, putting these uh, conductors through and you're seeding the cable, it's important to kind of see like where the end of the cable is ending up. And as you can see, I'm seeing purple here, and that's exactly what I want to see. It can stop right there, that's fine. Uh, if you try to push it further up, it's gonna end up uh, distending your plug housing and could cause you problems with unplugging and unplugging this. All right, now you might be tempted to put this into the tool and just terminate it, not quite yet. What you do next is you hinge up that external ground tab and you wanna hinge it in line with the cable jacket so it's nice and, nice and straight. And then you're gonna to wanna to fold down the two wings to get them started. And the next step is to use the true ground tool. You'll use the large cavity for this. And the perfectly uh, half circle here goes on the bottom side. So we're going to put that into the tool. And we're going to collapse those wings. All it takes is one good squeeze and you're done. That's it. It's crimped on perfectly. It's indenting the cable jacket just a little bit, but it's not too loose either. And it's a, it's a perfect crimp. And the reason why we crimp before we actually terminate the golden contacts is because if you terminate the golden contacts and then you go back and do the crimp, it can end up putting undue stress on the golden contacts and shift these conductors. So that's why we do the crimp first. And now we can go ahead and actually terminate the cable. Ramp up your conductors at a very mild angle, not a severe angle, just maybe by five degrees at most. Put it into the tool, make sure they, all those conductors clear that flush cut blade. Now push it until it's fully seated. Now as you start to close it, take your hand off, just like that. Take your hand off because that strain latch presser bar that's going into the rear of that housing is going to reposition the plug for you for a proper termination. And then all the way down, let it up. You may have a little hanger on, it's just a little piece of plastic, that's all. It, it actually cut the conductor. So that's, that's it. Uh, the cable's properly seated, so you have a half inch distance. All your golden contacts are down. It's fully flush cut at the front, and it's ready to go ahead and uh, plug in.
The method I uh, demonstrated here pretty much applies to any of our thick shielded CAT6 or CAT6A cable. It, some cables may have waterproof tape you have to take off or things like that, but the, the methodology here is going to be the same largely for all of them. I hope you liked the video. Leave a comment below. Give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. That'd be great. Uh, throw some comments in there so we can go back and forth and talk about this. And if you have some insight you can share, I would love to hear it. And I, with that, I'm going to say you have a wonderful day. Happy networking.